Hey guys, we are back with another tutorial. Today I'm going to talk about starting items. I had a quick, I mean, what do you want to call it? Like a quick discussion or a quick talk with some of my subscribers on Discord about what, you know, what might be interesting for you guys to see. So today I'm going to try to bring you a quick tutorial. As you guys know, this is in partnership with my good old friends over at Bitburger No No, who are going to help me, you know, just make this content. Um, just more professional and like hopefully also more often. I've been a bit lazy to be quite honest now over Christmas, but we're going to start pumping out some content again that is hopefully useful to you guys. So without further ado, um, let's talk about some starting items and let's talk about some ideas. And I mean, what is the logic behind starting items anyway? And why is it so important? I mean, if you have a look, Dota has so many different items. Let's just take the neutral items uh, away for now, okay? That's gonna be a separate video for another time. Um, there is so many items on Dota. Um, of course, when you talk about, when you strictly talk about starting items, not all these items matter because a lot of these are upgrades, of course, but still like starting your game off right with the right amount of region, the right items, the right item setup to, you know, put you on a good path throughout the early game is really important. And you need to be able to adapt from game to game. And you should also try to find your own item builds. So the first point I have um, that I'm going to start with, I mean, I'm going to give you guys some points and it's not like they're in chronological order in terms of how important they are. Um, <clears throat> but for instance, when I play mid Viper, which isn't often, okay, but I like this hero. Um, I know a lot of people, you know, when they go mid, they get their pool tangles, they get their one iron branch so you can place it and double tango, you get a fairy fire and you get like your wraith band stats, whatever. I think Ring of Basilius just makes more sense on Viper. That's just my personal take. I think, I personally believe that this is better and this makes me feel good because this is something other people aren't doing and I feel like I'm getting more value um, out of this item because... With this, you get three of all attributes, sure. You might miss, like, you probably get, like, two or three less damage than if you buy, like, this Wraith Band stuff, whatever. But I feel like the mana is really nice because it allows you to spam, like, really fast. Like, as you see, I don't buy mangoes. There's lots of other Vipers who buy mangoes. And I feel like if you can buy an item like Bassy and it gives you mana, which then means you don't have to use mangoes, um, basically, the Bassy net worth, it stays, right? While Mangos you use. Of course, if you play Shadow Fiend, you kind of have to spam Mangos because especially in a matchup like this, he, he, he has to do it in order to stay alive in the lane. But I like to go Bassy and then after I just instantly ferry out the stats as fast as possible and upgrade to a Wraith Band anyway. So that's just one take. This is just something I like to do. Um, this is something I figured out myself. Um, I'm going to try to talk about, like like I said, different item builds for different roles. Usually when you're mid, I think the mid item build is pretty straightforward. You get your stats, <coughs> you upgrade to your Wraith Band, no Talisman, Bracer, what have you. Maybe you rush a bottle on some heroes. Like, I think if you play Puck you, or Storm, you could rush a bottle. But just be careful when you do this. Like, lately, I played Zeus mid against Puck and I rushed bottle. It was a huge mistake because the Puck... How do you get runes against Puck? He just orbs. Like, you would have to run there beforehand or ask for help. So, in this game, I think this item build here makes a lot of sense. And I can give you guys, like, very great reasoning for it. Um, because what happens in this game is that I think beforehand uh, we decide how we lane. This will also be a separate video in a short time about how to set up your lanes... Uh, what's the reasoning for it? Um, what can you do about it? Like, uh, what is useful in terms of laning? Like, what do you need to think about? Uh, why should you swap planes in the first place? And <coughs> how can you use it to your advantage? Because in this game, if you just have a quick look at the hero matchups, uh, I think we picked our heroes pretty early, at least the tiny and the tree. So we have tiny treant against, uh, we have tiny tidehunter against slark treant. A dual melee lane against Tree and Slark, that is already a like <laughs> a recipe for failure in this bot lane. Especially because also if you look at their starting items, it's really smart what they're doing. They have Orb of Adam on Tree and which isn't anything new, but they have a Blightstone on Slark because they know that if we come to this lane, they're gonna fight us and they're gonna own us hard. So what do we do here? We talk before the game and we say, okay, Tiny, you just 
You just play mid and top on tiny, okay? What's important here is that I adjusted my item build. Usually when you go off lane, you will go Quelling Blade, um, some region, some stats, or whatever. But in this case, I know that I'm going to be alone and I'm going to be in a hard matchup. Therefore, I'm not buying items to trade with them. I'm buying items that will allow me to pull the wave and play by myself. Because if I run alone into this lane, God forbid, this is going to be a hard one. So what do we do? We buy ourselves a Windless and a Ring of Protection. Ring of Protection is good on most offlaners anyway, because... It makes you more tanky. Uh, most strength offlaners have low armor but high HP. So why the windlace? Well, the windlace. First of all, you kind of wanted to. You kind of want to have it later on anyway. And instead of starting with boots, you can go windlace and ring. And then it just allows you to pull the wave like this. Of course, you could also. Uh, you could also start with boots and one set of tangos, but I think this is just fine, especially because Trient is a slow hero. As you can see, we have 40 more move speed than him. And now this item build just made a lot of sense. And now with the first gold, we send our Quelling Blade. So by the time that we have the wave, like in our tower, uh, mind you that on Dire, it's really hard to connect these creeps. Whereas on Radiant, it's a lot easier because you have such the, spa the space here between the towers is so much bigger. But here, as you can see, we get to pull the wave. We get some CS. We actually, if I recall correctly, we get all four CS because we get the Quelling Blade in perfect timing too. So now we have four CS and suddenly... We already got two kills top, because they're starting there. Ty uh, Underlord is level 1, Rubik is level 1, we're getting kills on mag. I just got myself level 2 and 4 CS in the bot lane, so I'm happy. And, I mean, I'm not gonna say it's only because of the item build, but the item build sure helped. And it shows the intent, and it shows that I understand what my job is and what I need to do. Let's look at this game real quick. Um, here, I play with Nisha. And something that you kind of have to pay attention to as well is, I mean, how do the post fives play nowadays, right? Like, you have a lot of these disruptors and liches in the lane, and they just spam their spells. And this is highly viable because of the mango change, right? So first of all, <coughs> supports have a lot more gold nowadays. Wards don't cost anything. Everyone has their own courier. You don't even need to necessarily start with a sentry for your lane, always. Like, you don't always have to do it. Maybe I'll touch on that later. But if, when you play against these liches and disruptors, if you want to fight them, which should be your goal most of the time, unless you have a really bad lane like we did just now, you want to buy a lot of regen. So uh, I am the Rubik here. Uh, I'm the Rubik and Nisha is the, the puck. As you can see, I'm not going to say that this is the best build on Rubik because I did talk to some Rubik players and they say you should just go boots anyway because you cannot fight the lich and so on. But, um, I don't know, I still have mixed results, but I will trust them. Boots is probably the way to go. But as you can see here on uh, Nisha Puck, he buys a lot of regen. And I think usually, usually when you play Puck, you don't need to buy so much regen because the hero is very strong and you can trade well. So you want to go more damage and then send yourself the regen later. But I think because they have Lich, like if they have, if they have Lich like here or Disruptor, then you want to get this much regen because... Usually, like, you just need to think about it. Like, do they have heroes that might put you to low HP? And heroes that harass you a lot? Like, if Disruptor puts two Qs on you and hits you two, three times, you're very low. If you keep tangoing, you're not really ever in a fighting shape where you can fight back. Like here, for instance, the only reason this play actually works is because he has a salve. As you can see, they're trading a lot. He keeps fighting back. Crit puts himself out of position. Uh, Nisha starts solving up and he's already running back into them. In the meantime, I'm still hitting them. And now we just realize, you know, Crit is not in the best position and he ends up dying. This is all thanks to him having a solve and us hitting them and understanding that we can fight them. But the only reason that we are able to fight back is because of the massive amount of regen that both him and I have in this lane. Um, there's other good scenarios, I think, that you can think about. Um, if you lane against a bad rider, whether it's mid lane uh, bot side lane, like if it's a bad rider support or a bad rider core, you need to buy a stick early. If you lane against Bristleback, you need an early stick. Maybe even consider starting with it if it doesn't ruin, um, if it doesn't ruin your item build. Also, same scenario. If I play Venomancer against Veno, is really weak level one two, right? Like really weak. You have low damage. You have low move speed. You can't really fight back because both your Gale and Poison Sting aren't strong. That's why you need a lot of region. You want to use that region to help you get through your weak stages of the game, basically. So if I play Venno, um, if I play Venno, same scenario against Lich, Disruptor, 
whatever five Rubik or like a carry clinks here. They hit you a lot, right? You need a lot of regen against these matchups. So if I play Venno in these matchups, I will most, my most usual item build on Venno is that I go six tango south. And then I go circlet, branch, branch, branch. So I give myself the most amount of stats with the most region possible. This is 600 starting gold right here. I use three branches because in some games I will upgrade two of them into a magic wand and then I use the other one for headdress in case I go guardian greaves. And in some other games I just plant a branch and eat a double tango, right? And then I get a lot of region because like I said, it's hard for me. Like you want to be able to fight back and not lose level one or two too hard because then it's just not good. Here, for instance, you have a Legion commander who lanes against a bad rider middle and you can see that he adjusts his item build. Like usually you wouldn't get second item stake in the mid lane, right? But since he does lane against bad rider, you need to adjust and you need to get yourself that you need to get yourself that magic stick, right? And then one last scenario I have um, would be when you play support or when you play four, um, you want to make sure that you get items that make sense for you, but also make sense for your lane partner. And there's like, you know, there's Hedris, there's Basilius, there's Buckler. I think Buckler is probably the hardest to get as not mo most fours have a hard time using Buckler, at least later on in the game. Also, it's more expensive than the other ones. But I think Hedris and Ring of Basilius can be pretty good. Uh, an item build I like, especially on Snapfire, is that I go Ring of Bassy like kind of early on because I like to play with QW. Um, because if you have a quick look at how much Bassy helps you, so this hero, this hero without the, you have 0 0.9 mana region, okay, without this mask. And once you have Bassy, you go from 0 0.9 to like 2.5 or something, which is so much increase. See, see you go from 0 0.9 to let's say 2.5 because I'm level 3 now. So an item build that I just kind of like to go is that you could also go Bassy before the rune. Uh, like you could go Bassy, Tango and Mango before the rune. Actually, no, that doesn't work, I think. You can go uh, Bassy, one Tango, one Branch before the rune and then just send yourself region fast. But... I think you don't really lose out much on it if you go this build. Um, so usually what I do, I get more region, you get your branches and your your mask. And now you, you just send your Bassy basically straight away into the lane. And now you just spam spells, you know? And now you just need to make sure that you use it and that both you and your friend understand, hey, we have a ring of Basilius, let's use our mana. Because let's look, you go from whatever, I'm at 1.7 mana region, it's bugged for some reason. So you go from 0 0.9 to like 2 point something. And of course you help your puck too. Look, he goes from 1.4 to when I'm close. Okay, now he, he goes from 1.6 to 2.8. So you nearly like, you nearly double his mana region too. So it's not just good for you, it's good for your ally as well. So if both you and him can use, your, can use spells well in the lane, Especially if your enemies don't like to have spells used on them, aka if they don't have healers in the lane, then it's really hard for them to uh, play against these spell casting lanes. So Bassy is just very nice because it means that you have to buy less consumables in terms of like mana region. You have to buy less clarities, less mangoes, and stuff like that. It's like, it's net worth that stays and you consistently use. At least that's a good way for me to look at it. And then just other items that you guys un underestimate. I think what people have to do more, people have to buy more sticks, people have to buy more raindrops in the lane, more mangoes, more consumables, basically more items that allow you to fight because early fights in the lanes and allowing you to stay in the lane is really important. I wasn't always such a big advocate uh, about these things, but I, I learned the more I play and with the more people I played, they would teach me and help me like how to understand these things better. So, What's important here is that I adjusted my item build. Usually when you go offlane, you will go Quelling Blade, um, some region, some stats, or whatever. But in this case, I know that I'm going to be alone, and I'm going to be in a hard matchup. Therefore, I'm not buying items to trade with them. I'm buying items that will allow me to pull the wave and play by myself. Because if I run alone into this lane, uh, God forbid, this is going to be a hard one. So if I play Venno in these matchups, I will most my most usual item build on Venno is that I go six tango south, and then I go circlet branch branch branch. So I give myself the most amount of stats with the most region possible. This is six hundred starting gold right here. I use three branches because in some games I will upgrade two of them into a magic wand, and then I use the other one for headdress in case I go guardian greaves. And in some other games I just plant a branch and eat a double tango right, and. 
then I get a lot of region because like I said, it's hard for me. Like you want to be able to fight back and not lose level one or two too hard because then it's just not good. Here, for instance, you have a Legion commander who lanes against a bad rider middle and you can see that he adjusts his item build. Like usually you wouldn't get second item stake in the mid lane, right? But since he does lane against bad rider, you need to adjust and you need to get yourself that you need to get yourself that magic stick, right? And then just other items that you guys un underestimate. I think what people have to do more, people have to buy more sticks, people have to buy more raindrops in the lane, more mangoes, more consumables, basically more items that allow you to fight because early fights in the lanes and allowing you to stay in the lane is really important. I wasn't always such a big advocate about these things but i i learned the more i play and with the more people i played they would teach me and help me like how to understand these things better a quick recap if you're a position five especially if you're playing lich disruptor if you are them you need region you need some tangos you need a lot of mangoes so you can keep circling your spells you want to push the lane you want to annoy your enemy so that your carry can farm now if you are against these people if you're the position three or position four especially the position three you want to have a lot of region so that you can withstand this this harass so you can stay in the lane and fight back because if they push you out they win okay they're using a lot of gold on it so most likely you have to do the same thing at least as long as you have a fighting chance back if you don't have a fighting chance back you should look to maybe adjust your item build <clears throat> um, pull the wave maybe you can even lane swap for some reason if you're really hard countered um, if you play against specific heroes such as Bad Rider, Bristleback, maybe there's a Zeus in your lane, maybe they play offlane Caudal Legion, maybe they play Winter Wyvern Legion Commander, okay? Here, lanes like this, get an early stick, get yourself a lot of region, stuff like that. Um, are we missing anything? If you're playing middle, I mean, check, do you want to rush bottle? Maybe you want to buy more stats and then get a bottle later. Maybe you want a wind lace. Maybe instead of going early boots, you want to go double wraith band, double bracer. I think this is just something that you try to put your mind to it a bit more before the lane starts, before the game starts overall. Like, okay, what role am I? Who am I laning against? Who am I most likely or possibly laning against to like adjust your item build and understand? Can we pressure them early? Uh, do I need more region because they're strong? Or maybe, are we stronger? Can I use more gold on stats? Because maybe they won't fight us back or their, you know, their skills aren't as strong as ours. So I should buy more stats to attack them. Maybe I should even buy a Blightstone so that our auto attacks hit harder so that they have to buy more consumables. It, you need to kind of understand like your matchup, what you need. And then over time, trust me, your itemization will get better, not only in the start, but also in the game. The more that you actively think about it and the more that you actually, you know, put your thought into it and you see like how it goes, oh, this was good, this was bad. You're going to, not only are you going to think about it more actively, it's also going to help you over time, like realize what you're doing. And eventually you might just do it subconsciously because it, it becomes second nature to you to be doing these things. Okay. Um, so yeah, with that said, I don't know if I missed out, um, on anything that I wanted to talk about. Um, perhaps if you're a position five, I mean, understand when you want sentries, like when it is important to like pull, open the pull camp, depending on what heroes you play with, you should also try to understand, okay, my carry needs solo XP or okay, I need XP in this game. I should leech with him, but maybe I can go into that in another video. Um, so if you guys enjoyed this video or if there's maybe different tips you want, like different games or like, you know, uh, different mechanics or different heroes, just let me know down below. I think this video now took a bit longer than I wanted actually, but as I'm saying, I hope that it helps you anyhow in one way or the other, just try to think about it actively. And as always guys, remember that this is brought to you by myself and my friends over at Bitburger 00. We just wanna help you guys, you know, get better at the game, enjoy the game more, create some good content. And with that said, I hope that I'll see you guys in the next video, which should come out soon. And if you enjoyed it, leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.